Hi everyone, I'm out here with the Orion ED80 telescope, that's 80 millimeter, uh, 3.1 inch refractor. And it's a beautiful telescope. And tonight I want to focus on the Rosette Nebula. However, I added a field flattener to the scope and I want to show you how that, first of all, is set up. And then we're going to go after the Rosette Nebula. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I hope you like my page and if, if you do please subscribe and I learned so much from watching YouTube videos uh, and hopefully you'll be learning a lot as well. You know it's important when using a field flattener or a reducer to have the proper spacing in between the camera sensor and the focal point of the uh, telescope itself. Now what I've done here is I set up the uh, reducer Right. Actually, this is a field flattener, not the reducer. This is a field flattener. And between the field flattener, the lens right here, and the sensor, which is about right in here on the camera itself, uh, I have a spacer. This is a 20 millimeter spacer. Then this uh, filter drawer is another 17.5 millimeters. And then from the edge of the filter wheel to the uh, edge of the sensor is another 17.5 millimeters. That should come out to be, if my math is right, 55 millimeters, which is the uh, ideal focal point uh, between the flattener and the camera lens. That will put all the stars in focus from the middle of the uh, view all the way out to the edges on both sides. Now, if the spacer is too long, uh, the image will be distorted on the edges. If it's too short, the image will be distorted on the edges in just the opposite direction. So it's important to have the proper spacing uh, when you use flatteners or reducers with your telescope to the camera. You know, I get so much information from just watching other YouTube videos, uh, particularly those uh, dealing with astrophotography. And a, a, a recent video I watched from Joe's Astrophoto, uh, Joe Navarro of Colorado, had an excellent tutorial on Starnet or Starnet++. It is a piece of software that interacts with PixInsight, and from inside of PixInsight, once you have it set up, uh, you can use it to eliminate all the stars, leaving just the nebula behind, uh, if you want. Or you can blend the stars with the nebula, and we're going to do that today. And I want to again thank Joe Navarra from Colorado in Joe's Astrophoto. One of the interesting things about the Starnet++ Plus Plus, uh, through PixInsight is the way it can uh, delete the stars and just show the nebula all by itself. And then from uh, post-processing from there, you can blend the stars back in in different ways, or you can make the nebula uh, stronger in color or, or in intensity or vividity. Vividity? Is that a word? Vividity? <laughs> it's stronger in color. Uh, anyway, uh, th you can do this through the PixInsight and Starnet++. Plus Plus. So, which one do you like? Is it A, or number one, the original nebula with all the stars? How about this one? The nebula only, with no stars at all. Isn't that interesting? And number three, or maybe this one, a blend of the nebula with some of the stars. Well, so which one you like? Number one, the original image. Number two, the nebula only. Or number three, nebula with some stars. Leave your choice in the comment section below. Well, I had the telescope set up and nearby the Rosette Nebula, which is near the uh, constellation Orion the Hunter, there is another Messier object that I've been wanting to get. And I pointed the scope last night at M78. This is a, a, an unusual uh, feature. It's a, a reflection nebula that shows a lot of blue. And then just to the upper left, you can see the, uh, the edge of where the Horsehead Nebula is located. Another favorite target, which is very, very dim, and it takes a lot of exposing time uh, to capture these nebulae. However, uh, even with a small telescope, this can be done. 
Well, feel free to subscribe to my page if you like what you see here. And uh, leave your comments below as well. And which one do you like the best? Is the one with the, uh, all the stars, uh, just a nebula by itself, or a blend of all the two? That looks uh, interesting. Uh, I want to thank all the 1,500, almost approaching 1,500 subscribers to my page right now. And I just would like to continue to see more and more, uh, as I also like to watch the other pages as well. But uh, remember, the sky is filled with majestic wonders. Little guys like these can see them all in a sky near you. Unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.